It's two decades since the USGA finals, known as the Nationals, came to this part of the world. But surprisingly, the weather did not play ball on the morning of day one, making for a difficult start for players and spectators who were at the fields for 8am throw-ins. There was still some excellent play like this penalty save by the Cayman Islands goalkeeper and plenty of enjoyment among the Camogie players from Canada. There's a record 113 teams this year, proving that the Nationals still has a huge appeal. A Dubliner from Scaries knows more about its magic than most, having played in it an incredible 20 times. Well, my, I came to San Diego uh, 24 years ago, so I've been, my Labor Day weekend, which is, it's shifted this weekend, but every, every weekend I've been away. I've met great people over the years. I still go home, I actually went home and I won a final in 2004 with a fella, you know, junior B title, and I met up with him, so that's 15 years later, and I met him through the club, and he was actually the Mead minor manager this year, so, you know, it's amazing, people you meet and you get to know, and I think that's what the GAA is all about. What's your favourite memory of the 20 years? You, I suppose I'll allow you to have one or two. A uh, highlight for our club is definitely in 2007, we won the junior B and junior C title at the same weekend in Chicago, and we came with 29 players, so I think that was quite an achievement to do that. Um, yeah, that was the highlight, 2007. How many more nationals are there in you? Well, this is my 20th playing this year. Uh, the lads say that I should go for one more when I'm, I'm 48 the next birthday. I don't know if I had the legs, but uh, I'll be along to help out and be water boy or whatever's needed. I'll be there. A sign of the changing times was a victory for Pittsburgh over Donegal Boston, albeit at junior level. Yeah, it's big. Um, you know, people outside of Pittsburgh not, might not realize um, that, you know, we might be a small club in numbers in the context of across the country, but uh, we like to think of ourselves as mighty in power. Um, so, you know, over the years, we, we pride ourselves on competing with, with divisions that are um, in Boston, Philadelphia, San Francisco, Chicago, the big four, um, and then other teams across the country. So it means a lot to us um, to be able to put ourselves up against teams on that stage and ultimately come through the other side. And um, obviously we have loads of respect for them as well, but it, it helps to gain a little bit of respect on a national level as well when we're able to come and compete, not only this year, but on a consistent basis over the years. There was one little moment there that sort of summed it all up for me, and it was a fantastic block with a couple of minutes to go. Yeah, yeah, Danny Coyne, um, the, the man with the hair. Uh, he's a legend around Pittsburgh, um, but yeah, he's uh, he's been a best friend of mine since high school, actually. So um, I was part of the reason he started playing Gaelic football um, when we were about 18 years old, and here we are 10 years later. So um, he's a great player, and, and it's nice that uh, other people are able to see him and, and give him a little bit of respect outside of Pittsburgh, too, because uh, he's a very important piece to our team, and uh, there's certainly no fear in him whatsoever. Another very significant young team is the newly formed Delco Gales adult team, set up to provide a pathway for their own players who had played in the CYC youth tournament until the age of 18. Uh, yeah, I mean, I played in CYC my entire life as a kid. Um, fathers from County Down, big GA family, helped uh, start a lot of teams in Philadelphia, and I mean, I just grew up with Gaelic, uh, you know, full-fledged American, and here we are, you know, competing in Philadelphia against you know, full Irish junior teams and uh, just trying to make it a norm that Americans can play football at a top level. That's the key, isn't it? That the lads who have played through the youth ages can keep going. Exactly. I mean, the boys that are on my team, I've been playing with for more or less most of my life. And, you know, now we're well past the age of 18, some of us, myself included, uh, and we're still here playing football. And that's what it's all about. Is this the way forward, do you think, for clubs right across North America? I would say so. I mean, what we're doing, I hope, is somewhat groundbreaking, and I hope there's plenty of clubs that will definitely, you know, not copy us, but see what we're trying to do with this all-American youth program and just continue the game in this country with, you know, with Americans.